Well, your statement about Papaji and putting something at his feet before knowing what it is you want to say, and I'm really not sure what I want to ask, but we've talked about grief and anger. I want to talk about love. And you talked about um, letting the grief come and go. It's not part of the self. So express the grief, but it's not part of the self. But love, I mean, love comes and goes, and yet I was taught as a child God is love. And I guess I don't know different types of love, but Yes. It seems that when consciousness manifests or expresses itself as a human being, hmm, and as autonomy and individuality, its expression becomes more struggling, it seems, mm -hmm. when there is this identification there. And almost always, because there is, with this identification, some arrogance in us, preferences, judgments, desires, intention, projections, all of this come. Mm -hmm. And so being the beingness that's now identified with limitation, with the body, which is only the instrument through which the consciousness can taste experiencing with the assistance of the vital force. A secondary identity arises out of that as the independent me, the personality, mm -hmm. this is me. I have a context, I have religion, I have background, I have a, all of this. And there is a, a fragrance of selfishness in us, in this, in this expression. Our love is really moves beyond tribal love, or family love, or one-to-one -one love, or something. The idea of love, which is all-encompassing, all-embracing, seems a very, very far away, noble, but far away concept, unachievable for a mere human being, you see. Mm. So I don't know if there's anything anybody can practice, so to speak. Although, if consciousness manifests as the practice towards love, then it does this also, and mm -hmm. must bear some fruit. But what has been found here is that in really questioning what is our true nature, and something is driving us to do this, compelling us, at some level, some stage, to be looking deeply at these type of questions. Not merely mm. Mm, objective questions, but maybe a subjective question. But who really experiences things? Who really am I? Where did, where did I come from? What really is I? Such questions, I cannot say mm, what causes them to sprout, but it feels like they come when the environment is ready for it, somewhere inside. These questions come. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They cannot be forced. They seem to just introduce themselves, announce themselves within the being here. Mm -hmm. And as one begins to question and see that you cannot be any of these constructions that they came after, they're not original, they came later because there is a sense of I that can observe them. So the question follows through, what really is this I which is capable of observing all else? Can it itself be observed? And in this pointed exploration or introspection, one is finding that there is a, a spontaneous sense of an expansion, an expansive love which is not cultivated, it's not something that was practiced, it's just discovered to be here, outpouring, overflowing with love. And it doesn't seem to make divisions, but somehow within the fullness of this love, there can appear husband and wife love. Preferences. 
partner love, children love, a parent love, all of this can, can still flourish inside this unicity love, mm -hmm. like this. I found it's not really that it was cultivated, but that it was released somehow mm. from some concept of limitation that the being has believed in for a while, and that belief effectively hypnotized it into believing that it's merely flesh and blood for so long. So something is is built into all of this mechanism, some impulse, some urge to really go deeper than our conditioning, our education. This is grace itself. I call it grace. You may have another word for it. You see? Maybe love. <laughs> Why not love? Beautiful. Can really there be love without requirement? Can there be love which is really unconditioned? Yes, I have children and I've experienced unconditional love. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't have mattered which child I got. It doesn't matter what they do. Yes. There's always my love for them. Can we spread this? attitude further? Seems difficult, but of course, yeah. yeah. Because but there's wisdom already in that seeing. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. But in romantic love, for instance, I mean, it comes and it's wonderful and it expresses itself, and then it, it doesn't stay, and then there's pain and disappointment, and but you call it love, the same as this... It's another tool. Uh, it's one of the supremes, supreme tools, mm. because uh, through romantic love, it can get to parts the other love cannot reach. It gets to, to, to press buttons that other loves cannot reach. Mm. <laughs> to expose things that other actions cannot reach. You see. And that's love too. Yeah. It is love. Mm. It is love. It is love uh, in service to truth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, the love is here to help you to complete your inquiry also. <laughs>